Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another Total Extreme Wrestling video, the 2020 version of the game and the 2020 version of WWE and we are flying towards Extreme Rules, just two episodes left before the pay-per-view. Last week we found out our WWE Championship match, it's going to be Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton, Extreme Rules at the titular pay-per-view, that should be a hell of a match. Of course, last week we also had the NXT title on the line. This week, not as many title matches. No title matches on Raw uh, or SmackDown planned, but there is some on NXT. The NXT tag team titles and the women's title will be on the line. So this is a big week for the yellow brand too. This should be good. Of course, Queen of the Ring as well. Um, we are continuing with that with the second bracket of the quarterfinals. And of course, a big main event on Raw, Drew McIntyre versus A. J Styles. Whoa, let's get to it. We open up with this then, the return of Alistair Black to in-ring competition. He defeats Angel Garza, the man who injured him, of course, in that Money in the Bank qualifier. So a little bit of revenge here for Alistair Black, and he beat one of Andrade's cronies too. 65 for this is okay. 69 from Black is pretty good. 57 from Angel Garza is okay. There's only so much we can do with Angel Garza at the moment because he's in a position where he's. I'm expecting him to put on a decent match but put the other guy over, so his popularity isn't going to improve until we decide to push him even more. Now is not the time for Angel Garza. You can only push so many people, and now is not the time for Angel Garza, unfortunately. After the match, though, a 65 rate segment, Andrade comes out. Um, well, you can say he was already out there, really, but he sort of, he's in the aisle. The, 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 the um, uh, aisle? It is the aisle. That would be correct. But he's there, and he says to um, Alistair, you've made yourself very clear. You want to shut this belt? Fine. You've got it. At extreme rules, you can have the shot at your belt. And he's agreeing to the title match, sure, because he knows that's where he's heading. He isn't stupid. He's been in the business a long time. But what he's doing it for is to distract Alistair Black when Angel Garza and Austin Theory attack from behind. Andrade also gets in the ring and a three-on-one attack ends with Andrade hitting his um, hammerlock DDT um, and Alistair Black is laid out by the US champion and his crew. Let's use the numbers in this. Alistair Black, he's protected because it's three on one, but he's down. 65, a pretty decent start to the show, to be fair. Pretty good. Well, that's a boost. 74 80 promo here from Seth Rollins. Of course, these two, Rollins and Rey Mysterio, have agreed to an I quit match at the pay-per-view. And Rollins goes on a chair here saying about how Rey's made the biggest mistake of his life. He should have just joined the Disciples. But guess what? Now all he's done is... He's brought on the Reaper, brought on the end of his career. And after the Extreme Rules, he'll be called Seth Rollins Career Ender. 74 for a pretty good promo from Seth Rollins. He was then in action against R-Truth for 79. Wow, says Seth Rollins getting a 79 rated match from R-Truth. Well done, Seth. Well done. That's amazing. Nearly four stars from R-Truth. Jesus. R-Truth in ring forms for 53, but it was all about Seth here. And he gets the victory just under 15 minutes with the pedigree. Probably could have put less time on it, but obviously with a three-hour um, raw to fill, it's hard to do that at times. And I think having Seth in the ring for 15 minutes is probably more beneficial to the show rating and how the show would be than just a nice, simple win. I know sometimes it makes sense to have Seth go over in five minutes. And I'm sure I will do that at times. But right now with Seth as an in-ring talent and Red Archery's sort of performance isn't terrible, I feel like we can put on a good match. And that's exactly what happened. Seth getting the win with a pedigree of all things. Looking strong two weeks out from the pay-per-view. Becky Lynch came down to ringside for Colour Commentary. Similar to, to last week, she's got her eye on the Queen of the Ring tournament. 70-rated promo, 70-rated segment for this. Ahead of a big, big match in the semi-finals. It's Charlotte Flair versus Kyrie Sane. The winner goes through to the semi-finals next week, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, because this is week three. Week four will be next week. So, the winner goes through to the semi-finals next week. Charlotte and Kyrie gets us a 73. 
amazing. I don't know why I'm clapping so much today, but that is amazing from both women. Charlotte Flair, 69. Kyrie saying just 60 because her pop is quite low, but a 73 rate performance. And it's a tournament matchup. It meant something and it went into it. Charlotte Flair defeats Kyrie Sane. She's into the semi finals. Oscar, Shayna, and now Charlotte Flair all into the semi finals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. And it should be. A hell of a semi-final day next week. I am. I'm not going to reveal the matches just yet. There's still one more match to go, but it should be good. This match as well. The idea of Charlotte versus Kyrie. I don't know if we really saw it in a proper matchup. They may have had a raw matchup similar to this, I suppose, 15 minutes or so. But they've smashed it out the park here. Smashed it out the park. Well done, ladies. Well done. We go backstage where the Disciples and AOP are sort of having a, a briefing, so to speak. Seth isn't there at the moment. It's just these four, the tag team champions and the newly restored tag team of AOP. 49 for the backstage segment is okay. But basically what happens here is Disciples, they're saying about how, how the AOP need to punish the Street Profits. The Street Profits have just been a problem to them. So they want the AOP to go out and punish them. And AOP seem on board with punishing them. No problem on that. And they all seem to be on the same page. So Murphy, Benjamin, the tag team champions, seem to have AOP right where they want them, in their corner. So 49 for this. Ahead of that tag team match, it's the AOP versus the Street Profits. And it gets us a 55, which is okay, considering the popularities of AOP as well. But it ends in chaos. And as all four teams end up sort of circling each other, we can sort of say... The match is, is going nicely. Street Profits look like they're going to win when Benjamin and Murphy come out and get involved. Ivar and Eric also join the fray, and it's a four-on-four -four brawl, basically. Um, 55 is okay. Like I say, Rizar 43, Aiken 48. they got 40 pops, so we are going to have to build AOP up a little bit more, which is a shame. Uh, 56 and 59 for Dawkins and Ford is about right. Pretty good stuff all around, to be honest. I've got no issues with this. 55. Good, solid build in the tag team feuds. Now, the thing is, I was originally planning to do a tag team title match at the pay-per-view. But as I'm putting together my pay-per-view card, there's only so much space and so many feuds. And if I'm honest, I think the tag team championship feud may be a big tag match on Raw before a possible SummerSlam match. We'll see. 55, though, is pretty good here. And then it is announced straight away. We come back from break to announce it next week. These four teams will do battle not in a tag team championship match but in an eight man tag it'll be aop and the disciples the disciple stables so to speak taking on the street profits and the viking raiders the viking profits is that is that really what we're going to go with? anyway um but yeah it, it's going to be a good matchup next week and it'll be interesting to see what happens with the tag team champions involved in that matchup too. And we move on now to the second quarterfinal matchup of the Queen of the Ring tournament tonight. It is Liv Morgan taking on Ruby Riot. There's one spot left. Who will join Oscar? Who will join Charlotte Flair? And who will join Shayna Baszler? The winner is Liv Morgan. Liv wins. It makes sense if you looked at who was else in the match. 45 apiece on the in-ring performances. Gives us a 46 rated match. Considering the low popularity for this, this is as good as it was going to get. I've got no real issues with this. Decent reaction from the crowd, subpar wrestling. It's about right for the two of them. Liv Morgan, though, gets the victory. A quick roll-up. You can sort of start playing this idea that Liv is the underdog in this tournament. The underdog baby face with Paige in her corner. And she wants to win because she wants to be like Bret Hart. She wants to be like Shawn Michaels. She wants to be like all these heroes she's grew up with. Uh, John Cena as well, to be fair, with the time frame would be right. And she is the underdog of the tournament. Charlotte Flair, a multi-time champion. Oscar, multi-time champion. Shayna Baszler, an amazing NXT champion and an MMA fighter. What's Liv Morgan got? Not a lot on her resume, but she's got heart. She's got fight. And she's through to the semi-final. So it's Charlotte, Shayna, Oscar and Liv. And now we can announce it. We can announce it. Next week is the semi-finals. And here's the matchup. First up, this one. It'll be Oscar versus Charlotte Flair. A WrestleMania rematch. We did this match on Raw a few weeks ago. A while ago now. And uh, it was it was very good. So we're going to do it again in the semi-finals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. Oscar versus Charlotte Flair. The two most 
esteemed, I suppose, in the tournament, and they will do battle. One of them will go on to uh, Extreme Rules to be in that final. Will it be Oscar? Will it be Charlotte Flair? We'll find out next week. But that's not all. The second semi-final will also be next week. So that means, of course, the two that are left, Shayna Baszler will take on Liv Morgan. Liv, like we say, playing this underdog role, she is the real, real underdog against a, a, a woman like Shayna Baszler, an MMA fighter. She's on a roll. She wants Becky Lynch. But will she take Liv a little bit too lightly and will Liv maybe pull off an upset? It's going to be interesting to find out. That's two big Queen of the Rings semi-final matches next week on Raw. Okay, match up here. Rey Mysterio in action against one, uh, one half of the tag team champions. Actually, Shelton Benjamin. 65 for this is okay. Rey Mysterio really carrying it. Benjamin was slightly off his game, which I feel like we see that a lot lately, which is a little bit worrying. But Benjamin's there in the in the Disciples as the man to take the loss. So it makes sense here. Rey Mysterio getting the pin. Uh, 619 into the seated centre on 15 minutes or so. Gets the job done, really. Uh, Rey Mysterio getting a victory under his belt. Um, getting one over the disciples, so to speak, and continuing this feud with Seth Rollins. No problems with it. 65 is fine. Afterwards, though, Seth tries to attack. Um, to, he tries to attack in that. It's just Benjamin and Seth out there. And obviously, AOP are recovering from their matchup. Uh, Murphy is with them after taking a little bit of the beating from the Viking Raiders. Benjamin went into this match maybe slightly jaded. I mean, you can play into that. But Seth and Benjamin are out there. Benjamin's down after losing. Seth tries to attack, but Rey Mysterio sees it coming. Counters, and Rollins gets hit with a 619 before uh, Murphy can get out there to pull Rollins out of the way. So, no worries whatsoever. 61 for the segment. Not a lot happening, apparently. I don't know how to fix that. That is annoying. But Rey Mysterio attacks Seth Rollins in the ring and leaves him down. And that is what we said. Rey hits the 619, and Seth is down this week. Talk about a big main event plan for next week. It's going to be the number one contender for the WWE Championship, taking on the number one contender for the United States Championship. It's Randy Orton versus Alistair Black, a match we've yet to see in the WWE, and it is going to be a hell of a Raw main event, hopefully, next week. Just six days before the pay-per-view, these two will do battle Orton and Alistair Black next week. The Raw Women's Champion was in action against Becky Lynch. Uh, really good match here, actually. Defeating Peyton Royce in 15 minutes in a 70-rated matchup. Becky holding it together with a 70. Peyton was off a game as well. So to get a 70 out of it is really, really good. Becky just showing what she can do. Obviously, she's not involved at the pay-per-view. We're trying to build up a challenge for her more than anything. So we're just going to keep her strong with some good performances um, and keep her in the minds of people that she is still here, one of the biggest stars on Raw. And Becky does a job there with a 70 rated segment. Watching on from backstage, though, was Shayna Baszler. She cut a promo for 67, similar to what she's been saying over the last few weeks. Not as good a promo, actually. Um, just sort of saying about how she's going to defeat Liv Morgan. Then she's going to defeat one of Oscar or Charlotte. And then she's coming for that Raw Women's Championship. And at SummerSlam, the Shayna, the Shayna sensation will continue. Drew McIntyre makes his entrance for the main event. And AJ Styles, of course, makes his entrance. And... And AJ's got a mic on his way to the ring and he's talking. Uh, Drew McIntyre shouldn't even be the WWE champion. If Drew Mc... if AJ Styles had his money in the bank, Drew wouldn't be champion. But at the moment, he doesn't have it. You just wait till he gets it back on Sunday. But I've got a match for you now. Fine, I will show the world what I can do. But he's talking and he's talking as he's slowly getting to the ring. And that's because he's distracting Drew McIntyre. When in, in slithering through the ring from behind, it comes Randy Orton and hits the RKO. Drew McIntyre is laid out with the RKO and Styles and Orton start putting the boots to McIntyre. Of course, that brings out the run out of the save from Kevin Owens to run off Styles and Orton. It was meant to be Styles and McIntyre in the main event. I am sorry, but it's the bait and switch. So we are, we've done that segment for a 76. Really good. AJ invented a new catchphrase in that. Lovely. Kevin Owens improvised well. Um, okay, that's that's fine. 76 is okay. We need to change the announcing desk. And then we go to a break and we come back from break to find that Vince has said, no, 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 no. I, I we, we promised a main event to these people. They're going to get a main event. Fine. If it doesn't want to be one-on-one, -on -one, it can be two-on-two. -two. And the tag team match is made. Drew and Owens versus Styles and Orton in the main event. 76 for the segment. The main event gets us... 
A 77, good way to end the show. A really, really good way to end the show. Um, Kevin Owens, 72. Drew, 76. Orton was the standout with an 81. Uh, Styles, 77 as well. Really, really good stuff. The lowest one was Owens, which is no surprise, really, considering the popularities. But as you can see here, the winner is the WWE champion and Kevin Owens. Drew McIntyre getting the pinfall on AJ Styles with, the, we'll say, with the Claymore. Um, Styles and Orton, a bit of miscommunication maybe is what I'm thinking. Um, and Orton isn't there to win a tag match. Orton is there to soften up Drew. Orton, all, all Orton cares about is the WWE Championship. So if Styles takes the pin, he doesn't give a damn. And Styles is kind of left to the walls a little bit. Stunner into the Claymore. And the faces stand tall this week. A real good, feel-good ending um, for the show. 77 gives us... A 75 rated Raw, which is pretty good. We need to change TVs and sort all that nonsense out. But still, pretty good stuff for Monday Night Raw. 75, helped by that big, big main event angle. I am very happy with that. Very. I should say, look, I am, I am sorry for the bait and switch. I know it's not nice, and I'm sure you guys were looking forward to AJ and Drew. I know that's a big matchup, though, and that shouldn't be wasted. What it does is gives that idea that on Monday Night Raw, we are live and anything can happen. That's what we were going with. I'm sorry if I bait and switched you a little bit. Anyway, we'll move on. Main event coming up. Okay, main event kicks off with six-man tag action. The United States champion Andrade and his opponent at Extreme Rules on opposite sides. It's Selena's family, Andrade, Gaza and Theory taking on Alistair Black, Apollo Crews and Cedric Alexander. 65 for this is pretty good, especially for main event. Really, really good stuff. Alistair Black getting the victory, defeating um, Austin Theory. It was the most logical um, either that or you have Andrade go over Apollo Crews would have been the other option. But I wanted to get the face over here considering what happens later in the show in terms of heels and wins. So we'll have a look. Um, yeah, 69 for Alistair Black is pretty good. 66 from Andrade as well, really good. I'm hoping them two can sort of breach a 70 at Extreme Rules and boost each other a little bit more. Um, and and it'll, it'll continue is the idea with the feud. Angel Garza, 56, really good. And 54 for Apollo Crews isn't bad either. Um, 55 for Cedric is the one I've missed. Austin Theory there, 60, outperforming Angel Garza. That's interesting there. 65 is a good start to the show. Afterwards, we come back from break for Andrade being interviewed backstage for an 81 promo. Wowzers. Andrade has nailed that promo. I didn't script him. I wanted to see what he did. Let's not script Andrade going forward. 81 promo. Well done, El Idolo. Well done. He basically says about how... Look, like Alistair won't be good enough to beat me one-on-one. -on -one. He can win his six-man tag match on a C-show like main event. Everybody won't say it's a C-show, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, but, at, but at Extreme Rules, no chance. Because I am the ultimate United States champion. That's the moniker we're going to start going with. Ultimate United States champion. And at Extreme Rules, Alistair will know how it feels to meet with Andrade. 81. Wowzers. What a promo. Another promo here from the Street Profits, 59 for this to boost the tag team storyline. Just sort of saying how the champions got involved on Monday because they know that the Street Profits would have beaten AOP and they'll be beating the Disciples to win back their championships very soon. Monday, watch your back, Murphy and Shelton. 59 is okay. Ahead of another matchup, a six-man tag match. Again, it's going to be the Forgotten Sons, Cutler, Blake and Riker against R-Truth, Akira Tozawa and Tidus O'Neill for a 53. Okay, uh, yeah, not too bad. This was more of the storytelling matchup. Only got six minutes. Steve Cutler pinned Akira Tozawa. Uh, 30 from Cutler, 31 from Blake. 58 from Riker is the best of the lot. Really good stuff from him. Titus 54 off his game. Uh, Akira 50 and Artry 53. It is what it is. P solid main event stuff, but nothing special. So I'll take it. 53. Um, we then went into a Kevin Owens promo for 78. Really good promo from Kevin Owens. He was not scripted as well. Um, but Andrade, yeah, give him a better promo. But basically Kevin Owens, sort of another promo on AJ to hype up the matchup that... He's coming at Extreme Rules in the ladder match, so that's pretty good. Ahead of AJ in the main event against an NXT starlet, perhaps. Not someone in the main event of NXT, someone who's an up-and-comer. Isaiah Swerve Scott. AJ and Scott in a little bit of, a, of a, an internet treat, I suppose, on main events. The idea in the main event, they're going to get some time, and it gives us a 61-rated matchup, which uh, AJ was off his game, which is a shame. But still, with Isaiah Swerve Scott popularity being like 20... 
to get a 61 rated matchup in the main event. Well, well done, Isaiah's first guard. Styles kind of expect better. He, that is his popularity. But if he would have hit the 80, imagine a 70 rated match between these two. Imagine. I just wanted to see what would happen. And Swerve Scott is nailing it every time I give him a chance. That's well above his pop. So we just keep putting him in, in opportune positions. If we do decide to bring back the Cruiserweight Championship, which I am mulling over, and I think eventually that will happen, um, and we do it again. We, we, we reset it and go again with a tournament like they did in real life where El Hijo del Fantasma, or his new name, um, ended up winning the title. Similar to that, Isaiah Swerve Scott is a contender for that. I will say that much. 61 though, really good stuff. That gives us a 63 rated main event. Not bad. I'll take that for main event. The promos helped big time um, and the matches were solid. So yeah, no worries. We'll move on to NXT though. Two big championship matches. All two big championship matches. Okay then, NXT, like I said, two big tag team matches tonight. The tag team championships and the women's championship on the line. Let's get to it. We open up with a backstage promo from Johnny Gargano, or an in-ring promo, I suppose, as he's on his way out to the ring for a matchup, talking about being unbeatable. He is a North American champion. Nobody can, can get near him. People have tried. People have failed. Here he is as the North American champion. Not Marvel, like North American champion. But he looks unbeatable right now, especially with Dexter Loomis by his size. 67 is okay for an open promo. Um, we then went into a tag team matchup. Johnny Gargano and Dexter Loomis teaming up against Bronson Reed and Jake Atlas for a f ooh, 47. Wow. Johnny was not good here. Well, that's going to need changing. Gargano and Loomis have zero chemistry as partners. That's going to need changing. That's not a good start to show. I will change that. I'm sorry, but... The whole point is that they're meant to be together. And if they've got no chemistry, I can't really do anything. So I'm going to change that. Um, Gargano, 59, off his game. God's sake, Johnny. I was hoping you would hold these together and it would help Bronson and Jake Atlas. But anyway, the heels get a good win. Dexter Loomis getting the pin. Let's just move on quickly, shall we? That's better. 82. Adam Cole cut a promo on Keith Lee. Improvised. He wasn't scripted. And he's nailed the promo on Keith Lee. Keith Lee, of course... Came out last week to save Kushida from a post-match attack after the main event. Um, Adam Cole says Keith Lee needs to stay out of his business. 82, good promo. No problems there. Tegan Knox was in action, defeating Indy Hartwell in about seven minutes for a 43. Pretty good. Tegan, 46. Indy, 25. So, yeah, solid uh, TV sort of character-building matchup. Tegan getting a victory over a... Jobber, I guess, really, Indy. We're not going to use her at the moment, maybe in the future, but at the moment we're, we're putting Tegan over here for a reason. 43, pretty good. Carrying Cross cut a promo on Tommaso Ciampa for 56. That's okay, could have been better. Um, just sort of saying, look, I don't know where he is. I Obviously, he's, he's not where he's meant to be. But if he comes near him, oh, he will end Ciampa this time. The thing is, I did this thing where, obviously, Tommaso Ciampa would have been kidnapped or whatever you want to say and that's just, I, I soured on it I don't know about you guys but I soured on it so I'm moving on from it a little bit Champa's out um obviously Champa is is hunting for Karrion Cross. let's say Karrion Cross was in action defeating Real Mendoza in 64 for 4 64 Mendoza's still a face on this so I used him in the face role here eventually we will turn him heel obviously at the moment he's part of the stable with the cruiserweight champion El Hijo del Fantasma or whatever his new name is um, so eventually we will do that as a heel, but carrying cross, really good victory here, 64. He held it together, 64 from him, 44 from Raul Mendoza, and a good win for carrying cross. Afterwards, though, out comes Champa for the big showdown. 58 segment. Lack of anything interesting happening. I'm using the game's own angles here. It, uh, Champa comes out, they brawl, Champa puts him through a table. Lack of anything interesting happening. Yeah, whatever, 50, all right, whatever. We did a hype video for Timothy Thatcher that got a 19. 19, that's done well as well. Oh, God, this NXT's not done well so far. That's better, though. Tyler Breeze and uh, Fandango. Breeze Ango defeating Brian Kendrick and Araya Davari in about 15 minutes for 57. So this is pretty good. Fandango, 50 was a little bit low. 56 from Tyler was the best. Um, Araya Davari, 40, and Kendrick, 48, but a 57, so this helped. Good stuff. And another good win for Breezango, who are starting to rack up the victories. That's the idea we're going with anyway. Keith Lee got a promo on Adam Cole for 65, saying earlier that he heard him say stay out of his business. Well, Adam, the thing is, last week I talked about needing to find my new desire. 
the NXT Championship is now my business. 65. Keith Lee making it clear he wants Adam Cole and that championship. A couple of matches booked for next week. Then are a few matches booked for next week. Have a look at this one. Big tag team action. Karrion Cross and Cameron Grimes will team together to take on Tommaso Ciampa and Dominic Dijakovic. Cross has had issues with Dijakovic and Ciampa. So he will, have, he will have two rivals up against him, but he will have Cameron Grimes in his corner. So that's a big tag team match set up for next week. Another big tag team match set up for next week is this one. The Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish will take on Breezango. Breezango, like we just said, picking up wins, getting some momentum. They've got a tough test, former NXT champions, and maybe one of the best tag teams to ever grace NXT in the Undisputed Era. And finally, Keith Lee will be, a, be in action against Roderick Strong. That's a big main event for next week. Keith Lee has set his sights on Adam Cole. Well, he'll take on Roderick Strong next week. Adam Cole will be watching that very, very closely. Kushida cut a backstage promo on Johnny Gargano. He heard him earlier say now he's unbeatable, but nobody's unbeatable. And Kushida fancies his chances. A little bit of a challenge out there to Johnny Gargano. Kushida says he can beat him for the North American Championship. 49 is... Okay, not great. This show's not gone well. Next up, the women's championships on the line. Dakota Kai, Rhea Ripley. Will this save the show? I am not confident about that, but let's see what it does. Who will walk out with the championship? The winner and still NXT women's champion Dakota Kai. Good match, actually, for these guys. 52 It's never going to save the show, but a good match and the first defense of the title for Dakota Kai, and she gets the win. Defeating Rhea Ripley with a fast roll-up. A bit of a shock you can go with here. Rhea Ripley's the favourite, the more established star, you can argue. But Dakota Kai proves some people wrong here by getting a, a, an underdog victory as the heel. So that's the idea. Dakota 50, Rhea Ripley 47. So Dakota is really improving, which is good. It's exactly what you want to see. And 52 is okay. Afterwards, she over-celebrates for 37, so that's not great either, but she really over-celebrates um, the victory as an uh, obnoxious heel. We go backstage to see Vin Bala. Bala's not even meant to be here, but he is here tonight. 72. What the hell is Bala doing here? Ahead of the main event for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Of course, Bala has had issues with one half of the champions, Matt Riddle, recently. It'll be Riddle and Dunn, the Broterweights, defending against the Grizzled Young Veterans. Tornado tag style, which apparently you can't do in the game. I've tried. So it's set as a normal tag match, but it's a tornado tag for anyone that doesn't realise. And the winners. And... New NXT Tag Team Champions, the Grizzled Young Veterans. Let's sort this through then. 62 is okay. It's not been a great NXT. It's not been great. Hopefully, it, it makes more sense to you. The game has been a little bit harsh on NXT this week. It's a bit of a shame. But let's talk through the victory. So, these guys go 15 minutes and they're having a proper battle. Constant action. Tag Team Tornado style. When Finn Balor comes down to the ring, distracting Matt Riddle. I did put it in now. I don't know why it's not showing. It's a bit weird. But Finn Balor starts to walk down to the ring. Riddle sees him, gets out the ring, and, and walks towards Balor. Balor's backing up. And the point Balor is doing is taking Riddle out of the match. It was his plan. It was always his plan. Balor is taking Riddle away. Riddle leaves the ring, but of course it's Tornado Tag, so that means Dunn's on his own with Gibson and Drake, and of course the, the Grizzled Young Veterans take advantage. Another double team move on Pete Dunn, similar to what we did a few weeks ago after a matchup where Dunn was left on his own because Riddle left to go after Bala. The same thing has happened here. Riddle realises, but he realises too late. He can't get back in the ring as Zach Gibson gets the one, the two, the three on Pete Dunn. And the Grizzled Young Veterans have won the Tag Team Championships. Really, really good. 70 from Riddle was the best. Pete Dunne, 62, is a little bit low. Zach Gibson, 62, is really good from him. And James Drake, 48, is okay. But we have new Tag Team Champions. The heel tag team at the top of the mountain. Very, very good. That gives us a 66, which actually is a lot better than I was expecting it to be. So I will take that, to be honest with you. I thought that was going to be a lot worse, but the, the landscape of NXT has changed a little bit here. Now, Dakota Kai seems to be done with Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley's had a shot back. She didn't get it. Keith Lee is moving on from Johnny Gargano towards Adam Cole. Adam Cole, yeah, he is the man to take down. Gargano seems to be 
maybe linking up with Kushida is maybe an idea I'm going to go with. Brizango are really picking up victories and now with a heel tag team at the top of the mountain as champions. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Karrion Cross and Tommaso Ciampa will be in the same ring next week, so we'll see what happens with those. We're starting to sort of shift things a little bit, which is nice because we've got to start building towards NXT TakeOver uh well, i guess it's nxt take over 30 i think that's what they've done xxx or whatever it is um we'll have a look and have a, have, a, have a make sure it's linked up correctly but that will be next week next month same month as SummerSlam. so this should be interesting okay thursday night means nxt uk we're coming from birmingham actually i think we are and it makes sense with tyler bait in the main event so we'll move on to the opening segment of the show and it's a matchup it's going to be the odgmo OJMO, I still don't know how to say that. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. Against Noam Dar. And it gets us a good match here. A 45 rated matchup. The Ojmo, the better of the performers as well. Noam Dar, 38. I, I don't know what his pop is, but that seems really low. And for some reason, he's got an Israel, Israel flag. Is that an Israel flag? Because that, that's definitely not the Scottish flag. Interesting. Anyway, the Ojmo gets the victory over an established star, really, particularly in the NXT UK brand. No Amdar, really a babyface. We can push and push and push. I like I like a lot of what he's doing right now. 44, great stuff. His pop is 20-something to get a 44. is really good. 45, the matchup, a good win for a rising babyface. Good start to the show. Backstage is Drake Maverick cutting a promo on Volta for 67, saying, look, I've come into NXT UK and I have one thing I want. I've seen the best of this business. I have seen the very top. I have been places I never thought I'd be. I have been general managers, but I've never, ever been a champion of a brand here in the WWE. And that's what I want to be. So Volta, I want the NXT UK championships. And I know that sounds bizarre because you're up here and I'm down here, but guess what? I have got the fighting heart that you will never have. And I am coming for that belt. Drake Maverick, of course, 67. Um, but Ma Maverick, of course, is a black country boy as well. So being in Birmingham will have helped him too. 67, pretty good stuff. Gallus got a promo on the black country boys for 33. We could have probably had the tag champs in action in Birmingham, but we will come back to Birmingham soon, so it'll be fine. Not many options you can go in the UK. Um, this is all right. 33 for the segment is fine. They're basically saying, how don't forget about them in the title picture. They're not the champions. Ignore the pictures. Um, but they are. They want those belts back. And... Don't worry about Eddie Dennis. Don't worry about um, Joe Hendry. Don't worry about Killian Dane. Worry about Gallus. They were then in action, defeating Ryan Smile and Scotty Davis. Two debutants on the brand here, and they put in a pretty good performance. 39 overall, and actually it was Ryan Smile who was the better of the three, the four uh, men out there. Mark Coffey, 36, has got Scotty Davis, 33. The worst is Wolfgang. He was off his game a little bit, which is a shame. The gimmicks haven't done great. We could have a look at everyone's gimmicks, to be fair, because everyone's coming in as like old school faces, old school heels. So we will change them up a little bit. But interesting, Wolfgang getting the win with a swanton bam. Wolfgang, I'm saying that because it's Volta, but it's Wolfgang. So yeah, 39, pretty good. Kaylee Ray cut a promo, 53. She was brilliant as well without a script. I wanted to see what she'd do, and she smashed it out the park. Really good stuff. Talking about last week's title match, of course. From my point of view, it was meant to be a title change with Tony Storm winning the title, but they had to call an audible. Tony Havard had an injury; she won't be back just yet. And Kaylee Ray says, "Look, I want to put, I want to put, I want to put my best wishes out there to Tony Storm. No one likes to see anyone go down with an injury, and I am sorry that that happened, but I am still NXT UK Women's Champion. Nobody's going to take this title off me now. I know there's a number, a number of new faces in this women's division." And I am standing here at the very top to say, you want to take a shot at the Queen? Come and take your shot. Kaylee Ray with a message to the rest of the women's division that she won't back down from anyone. 53 is really good from Kaylee Ray. I'm pleased with that. Tyler Bate got a promo for 58. Good stuff from him. He was scripted and it worked well. Hyping up the match against Chris Brooks, which is next. Talking about how Chris Brooks is jealous of him. And why wouldn't he be jealous of him? Because Tyler Bate is young, he's strong, he's hungry, and he's going to be one of the best in the world. 
that's what Tyler Bate wants. That's what Tyler Bate thinks of himself. He's not arrogant. He's confident and he's going to prove it against Chris Brooks. Now, this match, I have really high hopes for this. So let's see what this does. It's Tyler Bate. It's Chris Brooks. Main event of NXT UK. They're going to get time. I've told them to steal the show. And it gets us a 66. Now, that is really good for NXT UK. It's going to be interesting to have a look at that. If that's one of the best in NXT UK history, I'll have a look after the show. I'm pretty sure it is great that they have good chemistry as well. Lift the match. Tyler Bates, 68. Chris Brooks, 51. A 66 rate matchup. But as you can see here, the hometown boy, so to speak, loses in the main event. Chris Brooks getting the victory with a handful of the tights. Chris Brooks cheats to beat Tyler Bates. Tyler Bates isn't beat a 1, 2, 3 down and he's out with a finisher. It's, it's a quick roll up, a handful of the tights. These two are not finished. These two are not done with each other yet, but Brooks, as the wily heel, gets the victory in the main event. And that gives us a 60 rated NXT UK. That's probably the best show we've ever had, to be honest. 56 regions, popularity, really good stuff. You need more shows like these and NXT UK will boost. Great stuff from the Ojmo. Um, tag stuff wasn't that bad. The promos were good and the main event knocked it out of the park. I am so happy with that. We'll have a look now at the, the overall show ratings in the history and the match ratings. I'm intrigued. So as you can see here, the shows from 2020, ignore this NXT UK aftermath. That happened by accident in the first week. It wasn't meant to happen, so ignore that. I didn't book that. I was the computer. But the best show we've had is down down here. That well, I mean, I'm ordered by attendant. That makes sense. Uh, is this by date? That's by date. Rating. Okay, here we go. So the best show we had was, yeah, that one. That was the best show we had. 60. Really, really good stuff. Miles apart from the 49, which again was bait in the main event. No surprise against Joel Redman that time, um, which was last, oh, it was a month ago. It was a month ago. But we are improving big time. Drake Maverick in there got a good one. Um, and then Volta and Elia, good stuff. So as you can see, those four shows, if we can have more shows like this, we're going to improve popularity for this brand big time. And the matches then, should we have a look at the matches, match history? Here we go then, as you can see then, by, I mean, 11 rating points, Brooks and Bate have hit the best NXT UK matchup. So far, we yet to have a pay-per-view, of course, um, and it's going to be interesting to see if Volta and possibly Drake Maverick I think that's where we're going to head for the pay-per-view if it comes soon. It's interesting because obviously NXT UK aren't happening in real life. I'm intrigued whether I should do a pay-per-view anyway. You guys let me know what you think. I think it's time NXT UK possibly had a pay-per-view, but we could just continue with TV shows, big TV main events, and I've got no real issue with that either. So Brooks and Bate have smashed it there. Okay then, Friday Night Smackdown to end the week. Last week, of course, we had that big Iron Man match, Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan. We did announce some matches prior Big E versus Shinsuke Nakamura and uh, Ricochet against Robert Roode. And then the big tag match, which will be the main event, Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns against King Corbin and Sheamus. So let's open up. We open up with Daniel Bryan coming to the ring. Bryan does come to the ring in an 83 rated segment and calls out Braun Strowman. Bryan says, listen, Braun, for the past few weeks, I've been watching you let Roman Reigns get his ass kicked. And then last week, I called you out on it. Later in the night, you cost me the Intercontinental Championship. Don't give me any excuses. Don't give me, oh, I was there to help you because Seamus was there. You came out with your big plunder in hand and you got in the way. Braun Strowman comes out, menacing as always. Universal Championship on the line. Oh, sorry, on his shoulder, not on the line, obviously. Um, Braun Strowman says, listen, Daniel, I respect you. You've done so much for this business. But if you ever put my name in your mouth like that, you are going to get these hands. Now, listen, last week you lost the title. And I'm sorry for that. And I am sorry if I played a part in that. I was genuinely just coming out to try and help you because I listened to what you said earlier in the night that Seamus needs someone to deal with him. And I look at you and I think, hmm, yeah, it's not going to be you, is it? So I thought I would deal with him. They start arguing back and forth and back and forth when... No chance, so that's what you got. You get the point. Uh, Vince McMahon comes out and says, listen, no one's here to see you two arguing. Brian, me and you may not have always gone in the past, but I get you, you've got an issue with the Universal Champion here, but Braun is already in a match later tonight. But what I can do is add a little bit of a layer to it. 
So Brian, you want you want Braun Strowman in the ring tonight. You're going to get Braun Strowman in the ring tonight, as you will be the special referee for the tag team main event. Brian looks confused, but also a little bit pleased. Weirdly, Braun's a bit frustrated by it, but Brian will be the main event referee. So let's see where that goes. Eighty three, fabulous segment to start the show. Really good. Braun wasn't scripted and did really well. Brian was and also seemed to have done really well, but really, really good stuff. Eighty three, good start to the show. Next we go to in ring action, and as we mentioned, Big E now is getting an Intercontinental Championship shot. That is confirmed. We can throw the graphic up right now. It'll be Big E versus Sami Zayn at the pay per view. However, Big E needs to go through some challenges first. Last week he beat Cesaro. This week he's got Shinsuke Nakamura. And the match gets us a 74. <laughs> yes, get in. Big E defeats Shinsuke Nakamura. More clapping. I don't know where it's coming from today. Big E defeats Shinsuke Nakamura in about 15 minutes. The big ending. But Sami Zayn was involved in the finish. Trying to help Shinsuke Nakamura. And it backfired. Big E 66 for his popular... For his pop, that's really good. And Shinsuke Nakamura held it together. 72. A 74 rated matchup. That is what you like to see. And another big win for Big E, who gets on the mic afterwards and promises to win the Intercontinental Championship. He wasn't scripted and he did really well with the freedom. 68. Good show so far. Good stuff. We come back from break to see the SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey on her way to the ring. And she's got it, she's on the mic. Uh, Lacey Evans is already waiting in the ring for as her opponent. And Bailey says, look, last week I took on Ember Moon and I won. Now I'm hearing a lot of people saying that I can't win on my own. I, I'm not I'm not a real champion. I mean, I am the women's champion. I am the best champion. And I'm gonna prove it. So Lacey, today's your lucky day. Today you get to go one on one with the champion. And you get the championship on the line. Bailey's saying she wants to prove the critics wrong and she's got to put the title on the line right now in an impromptu title match against Lacey Evans. 47 for the promo. Mickey James isn't a good road agent. We need to change that. Um, not great. The match itself then. Bailey and Lacey in a little bit of a maybe, I'm hoping it'll do quite well. It might surprise a few. Bailey and Lacey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. He's a 57, so that is really good. Bailey, 56, fantastic from her. Lacey Evans, 45, no slouch either. And a good SmackDown tag title, uh, sorry, tag title, TV title match. Bailey, of course, gets the victory, retains the title, and another another title retention on her title reign is good. Um, Bailey getting a clean victory. She did the job. She's proving people wrong that she can win on her own. That's what we're going with here. Um, but it leads into something else because afterwards, as she's celebrating, Stephanie McMahon of, sort of appears on the Titan Tron and says, Bailey, well done. Bailey, Bailey, well done. And I'm so glad to see you're willing to put your title on the line because at the pay per view, you're going to be putting your title on the line. I watched last week and I watched how Ember Moon was screwed out of a victory against you. So she will get her shot at Extreme Rules. She will get the shot at the title. And Bailey's like, Right, whatever, whatever. I'll beat her anyway. I'll beat her. I've beat beat her last week. I'll beat her. I'll beat her um, at the pay per view because I, I still have my best friend Sasha Banks in my corner anyway. And so uh, Stephanie McMahon goes, ah, oh, before you go there, Ste uh, Sasha Banks will be out there because she's part of the match. It's got to be Bailey versus Ember Moon versus Sasha Banks, elimination style, and the women's championship will be on the line. Bailey freaks out. Sasha's in the ring, obviously, with her, was helping to celebrate. And uh, she's a bit like... Right. Mm. Mm. She's not freaking out like Bailey because as she sees it, hey, she's in a title match. We'll get more to that later. 57, though. Good match. And there we have the announcement. So, yeah, get that graphic on the screen. Bailey will defend against Ember Moon and her best friend, Sasha Banks, in an elimination triple threat match at the pay-per-view yes 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 in one of the announced matches for tonight ricochet defeated robert rude for 71 really good stuff ricochet 74 performance fantastic robert rude 54 let it down ricochet really carried this to a great match gets the victory as well his first appearance his first match on smackdown and he wins against robert rude after the match though rude and ziggler start putting the boots to ricochet when out comes to return the favor mustafa ali for a 67 rated segment 
Ricochet and Ziggler weren't scripted. I don't know how it would work with scripting, but okay, whatever. And it worked really well. Worked really, really well. Um, Mustafa Ali coming out to make the save. And uh, Ali and Ricochet seemingly might just be a potential tag team going forward. 67, really good stuff. And then it's announced next week that potential tag team will be in action, taking on Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. These two teams seemingly have been feuding over the past few weeks. It's one of these things we've been doing, but won't quite fit onto the pay-per-view so we're doing it next week on Smackdown Ricochet and Mustafa Ali against Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode Daniel Bryan was backstage for 73 he went off script and it struggled him he struggled but he still got a 73 promo so I'll take it uh, talking about Braun Strowman talking about being the referee tonight and the uh, announcer the announcer the interviewer say it's I don't know, Renee Young or Charlie Caruso, whatever. Say, Daniel, I just want to ask, obviously you've got issues with Braun Strowman, you've got issues with Sheamus, you've got issues with King Corbin. The only one you seemingly don't have issues with is with Roman Reigns. People are talking, can we rely on you to call this match down the middle tonight? And Daniel Bryan says, yeah, of course you can. Of course you can. I, 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 all that matters to me is that in-ring competition and the tradition of that in-ring competition. That's who I am. Do I like Braun Strowman? No. Do I like Sheamus? No. Do I like King Corbin? No. Do I respect Roman Reigns? Hell yeah, but that doesn't mean anything because I see one thing right now. I see a hell of a tag team match, but also a universal champion who seems to be annoying everybody. So Braun, yeah, I'll call it down the middle. I don't think we're done. 73, really good stuff. Um, and then we go into a matchup between The Miz and Jeff Hardy here. Um, 76, really good stuff. Really, really, more clapping. What is going on with me today? The Miz, 74. Jeff Hardy, 63. Um, good work. Good work from everyone. Um, the Miz, of course, getting the victory afterwards. Miz and Morrison are in the ring and they um, sort of start talking crap about heavy machinery again. A uh, big argument happens. Heavy machinery comes out and they start brawling around ringside. It gets pulled apart. But these two teams are bitter rivals right now. Um, and we will see if they make it onto the tag teams, uh, onto the pay-per-view. I've got to be honest, I think they may not. But we'll see what happens. They are smashing it right there, though. 73 segment rating, really good. Tucker underperformed, but Miz is a real star right now. And he is nailing it. Backstage, an 86 rated segment. Wow, this show has been fabulous. Is Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns in a locker room. And Strowman comes in and says, look... Um, I get there over the past few weeks I could have helped you and I realised that last week which is why I tried to help Brian I said that earlier but Roman I've got your back tonight and Rain says good good and Strowman starts before Roman cont continues Strowman goes yeah so if Seamus if King Corbin even if ugh, even if Daniel Bryan gets involved we need to stick together and Roman goes hang on hang on Brian said he's going to call it down the middle I have no reason not to believe him I trust him I respect him he's my friend we may have done battle in the past, but he's my friend. And I don't like the fact that you put him down so much earlier. He will call it down the middle. And he will be respectable. He's Daniel Bryan. Now leave him alone. And, and Strowman and Ryan Reigns are starting to no, maybe not quite see eye to eye over Daniel Bryan getting between them. 86 for the promo ahead of the main event then it's Strowman and Reigns against Sheamus and Corbin with Brian as the referee I'm hoping this might be the best match we've ever had genuinely let's have a look it gets us a 76 so it's not quite but it's still a very good main event and as you can see here Sheamus and King, King, King Corbin get the victory Braun Strowman is disqualified now let me talk you through it they're having a good back and forth match but Brian as a referee is being a stickler for the rules because that's what he does he respects it so Strowman's got Sheamus in the corner and he's pounding away Brian has to get in the middle of them that no you had the count you got the count and Strowman has enough and Strowman pushes Brian down. Reigns is like, whoa, 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 whoa. And Brian calls for the bell. Strowman's disqualified. Strowman is furious though. Strowman running power slam to Sheamus, running power slam to Corbin. Reigns and Brian are watching on, running power slam to Brian. Reigns isn't happy and nails Strowman with a punch. But Strowman comes back. Strowman running power slam to Reigns. Strowman has left everyone laying, whether that's Sheamus, Corbin, Brian, or Roman Reigns. When again you hear, 
no chance. So that's what you got. Dun, 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 dun. Vince McMahon comes out and says, Braun, that was impressive. And it gave me an idea. You've got a lot of contenders right now. So you will be putting the championship on the line at the pay-per-view in a fatal four-way matchup. It's going to be Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns versus Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan for the Universal Championship. 76 for the main event match and the segment afterwards that we just talked about gives us a 78, so a really good way to end. But as you can see, graphic up on the screen, that is one hell of a fatal four-way. No King Corbin because... Well, it's King Corbin. I could have made it a fatal five-way, but I just didn't want to put, put Corbin in the match. But Rain, Strowman, Brian, and Sheamus, that is a hell of a main event. Hell of a main event. Strowman seemingly pissing off everyone. He's still a baby face, but he's he's a, he's a baby face that, I mean, he, he he's out for himself still. His character makes sense that he would have issues with these people. And it's going to be a hell of a matchup, hopefully, at the pay-per-view. That then gives us a 79-rate SmackDown. Really, really good stuff again. Really, really, really good stuff. Let's talk. Uh, let's have a look at the top 100 because I think that's our best show. Well, not quite. Second best show, joint joint best show, I guess. Uh, 79. I mean, it's still good. It is still very, very, very good, and I am so happy with how things are going right now. Next week, then we've got a massive show, massive uh, episode, I guess. Um, a week of shows before the pay per view. And I've, you've seen some of the matches we've already advertised. Alistair Black, Randy Orton, that big eight-man tag match in the tag division over on NXT. You do have some big matches. You've got Karrion Cross and Cameron Grimes against Tommaso Ciampa and Dominic Dijakovic, Keith Lee and Roderick Strong. Over on uh, SmackDown, of course, we've announced some already. Ricochet and Dolph, uh, Ricochet and Ali against Dolph and uh, Bobby Roode. So... It's going to be a big, 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 big week of shows. Make sure you don't miss it. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any of the content. Of course, there is already a Total Extreme Wrestling save going on um, in a network save. We we dropped the first episode a few weeks ago, um, and there will be a second episode. Should be planned for this Sunday, so make sure you don't miss out on it. Um, it's going to be big. Thank you for everyone who's been subscribing and liking and commenting lately. Things have boosted mainly lately and we've crossed the 80 subscriber mark so that's massive what i am going to do here today is the very first thing very first time i've ever done this so let's see if this works if somebody's if you're still watching at this point i am setting a like target can we get to 10 likes 10 likes on the video it's not asking a lot in theory 10 likes that i'm going to put that down to you and see what you guys can do if you liked it make sure you like the video anyway and until next time big week next week peace